Hey guys, this is Panda here, and it's been a while since I've recorded a YouTube video. Um, I'm making this video to talk about the horror marathon that I recently finished on my Twitch channel. It was a month-long marathon of playing nothing but horror games, uh, as a lot of streamers do on October for spooky times. And holy crap, am I tired. <laughs> I am tired! I like, I, my... My last stream on that marathon was like 11 and a half hours and it's, I'm still tired from it. Um, but anyways, I'm going to talk about the event, like how it went, some of the highlights, some of the disappointments and just overall. So to begin, uh, when we first started the horror marathon, which I still wish I had a better thing to call it. I just called, I just said it was spooky games all month. I didn't really say like horror marathon, horror month, whatever. Everyone calls it horror month. So I was trying to come up with something creative, but nothing came to me. But anyways, we played Resident Evil um, for the first, for the first half. And I want to say that I was not expecting Resident Evil to take that much time. Honestly, I estimated it would take about a week. And the reason why it was so short to play through all these Resident Evil games was because, well, one, you know, I play them all the time. So it's not like I was going to get lost or not blind playthroughs. Um, and, you know, two, I, I speed run two of them. I speed run Resident Evil 3 original and um, RE2 remake. And this whole marathon ended up taking 17 ish days. Uh, that's more than half the month just gone. Uh, and it threw off my whole scheduling, to be to be honest. <clears throat> I didn't think it was going to take that long. A lot of the games ended up taking, you know, two streams to, to beat. Um, like Resident Evil Zero took two streams. Once we got to the classic trilogy and the like the remakes and stuff, that went a little bit fast. But then it started to slow down again once we got to um, Resident Evil 4, because even though I know where to go and you know it's not too hard it's still a long game especially if you're watching all the cutscenes and stuff i also did play resident evil 5 with roro which was fun um you know i just wanted to keep roro involved even though i know he doesn't like horror games but i still wanted to not give up playtime with him you know still wanted to play with my homie and we ended up skipping six because you know resident evil 6 is just trash and honestly we probably could have skipped five <laughs> Because, you know, that's not even really a spooky one either. But, you know, I want, like I said, I wanted to play with Roro. So we played basically Resident Evil's 1 through 7 minus 6. And I also played Revelations 1 and 2. Those games were also long as well. I also forgot how long Revelations 1 and 2 was. Those took multiple, uh, multiple streams. So that's probably why it ended up taking like more than half the month. Um, I also tried a new Resident Evil game that I had never played before ever. Um, I actually tried two new Resident Evil games, I guess. One being not so new, which was the Resident Evil 3 remake, which um, it was enjoyable for the most part, just to keep it short. Um, but I, I, I don't like how short the game was. You know, a, a lot of people saying how much cut content there was, and it, it really did feel like you know a very trimmed down version of of the original Resident Evil 3 despite you know how pretty it looks and the whole cinematic experience with nemesis chasing you in the beginning um but yeah ultimately it was as good as it was it was still a disappointing remake and to move on to dead aim which is the other resident evil that i had no idea existed and i've never played Whew, that game was even worse way 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 worse um yeah so a very big disappointing game. Definitely not gonna replay Dead Aim, but you know, at least I get to say, hey, I beat it. Uh next year if I do a Resident Evil um marathon again, I'll you know, I can switch it up, play some different games. There's like Umbrella Chronicles, Dark Side Chronicles. Um there's there's the Resident Evil on the Game Boy that I haven't tried, and some other Resident Evil ghetto games that like I haven't played in a long time. Might just to replay them for funsies, but uh, yeah, the first half of, of the horror marathon was definitely lots and lots of Resident Evil. You know, I, en I enjoyed the ones that I, I, I liked, you know, like I always I always talk about how much I love RE2, RE2 Remake, Veronica and, and so on. Um, but damn, some of those games are really long. Uh, moving on after the Resident Evil fun times. 
I started moving into some games that were interesting to say the least. There were games that I've wanted to play, but just for one reason or another, just never got to it. Uh, some of these games included Rule of Rose, uh, which <laughs> a very interesting game. I'm going to talk about more that, about that later. I also played Saw, was the movie uh, video game. Uh, Dead Space 3 with Relevant to do more co-op stuff. Um, I played Dino Crisis. And I'm pretty sure there's like a game or two here and there that I missed. I know I let the community pull in some points together. So that they could include a Silent Hill game because they really, really, really wanted to play a Silent Hill game. Um, so I was like, all right, I'll, if you guys really want this, you know. And it ended up being Silent Hill 2. But let's talk about the bit of randomness towards the second half. Um, I didn't plan the entirety of Horror Month uh, at all. I know some streamers like plan like, okay, week one, this week two, this week three, we're going to play this. I literally made this shit up as I went. I was like, all right, it's October. Let's start with the Resident Evil thing. That's easy. Uh, I thought that would take a week, like I said earlier, but it did not. So there was there was some games that I was planning on playing, but just because I realized, holy shit, this marathon, this Resident Evil marathon took more than half the time. I was like, oh shit, um, I don't have time to do like Dead Space one and two. Uh, in preparation for playing th the third one, that had to get scrapped. I was going to play Fear because it was its 15th anniversary um, and some other games. But, you know, just again, just loss of time. So maybe next year. Um, so starting with some of the games that were memorable to me is definitely Rule of Rose. Uh, that game very is actually... First of all, it's like one of the rarest PS2 games you could you could buy, right? Like a copy of it costs hundreds of dollars, especially if it's in good condition on eBay or whatever. Um, but the game itself had a very confusing story, clunky gameplay mechanics, and some ridiculous boss fights. Um, afterwards, when I beat it, I, I'm pretty sure I gave the game like a 6 out of 10 because it was just bled. But once I... Once I beat it, I watched a video that explained the story more in detail and what was really happening, and that helped me a lot to understand the story, and I was able to appreciate it more. Um, I highly recommend it if you did play Rule of Rose or if you're just interested in its story, uh, but you don't want to play it, definitely look up, you know, maybe just watch a no commentary playthrough of it and then just watch the video that explains it. I'll link it in the description if you're curious. Um, it really helped me understand it. So. Personally, it like bumped the game up for me to like a seven because again, still, even though the story was like made a lot more sense after watching that video, um, it doesn't help that the gameplay was still bleh, uh, very clunky, very, uh, you know, it made Silent Hills, classic Silent Hill uh, combat system look smooth as fuck. And that's just not true. So, yeah, Rule of Rose is definitely an interesting one. Um, and then I moved on to Saw, the video game. And to be honest, this that was more of a, hey, I got a PS3 emulator working on my PC. Let's try it out. There are other horror games on PS3 that I could have tried as well, like Condemned 2. Um, so maybe I can save that for next year. And yeah, uh, the, the game went well, like emulator wise, emulation quality wise, no hiccups. No FPS drops, no weird glitches, you know, usually on my PS2, PS1 emulator playthroughs. I'm like, oh, you have to ignore this part because the game's glitching on the emulator for some reason. But no, this game ran, ran smoothly and it went fine. Uh, but unfortunately, Saw so just was not uh, that good of a game. I felt it was too long and very repetitive. Lots of lots of puzzles, uh, lots of the same puzzles, same types of puzzles. Um... And yeah, just not very interesting. Combat was super easy. Uh, none of the weapons do jack shit. You could literally just get by the whole game just by punching people. It's literally it. Uh, that game was very refreshing though. This <laughs> puzzle, it's, I remember that. Um, but yeah, uh, good test for the PSG emulator. Hopefully, I can try to do some more games on that in the future, both horror games and non-horror ones. So, look forward to that. 
Um, Dead Space 3 is another game that I played with Relevant. I didn't play Dead Space 1 or 2 this year, but I still, you know, I played those games a lot way back when they came, were, were uh, brand new and released and stuff, and I enjoyed the hell out of them. So I had high expectations for 3. Unfortunately, Dead Space 3 is super disappointing. Oh my god, like, the whole love romantic subplot with Isaac, Ellie, and and uh, whatever Ellie's boyfriend was, was so stupid. Absolutely stupid. Um, you know, that's not where I want a horror game to have some stupid drama with love triangle bullshit. Like, I, I did not enjoy that at all. Dead Space 3 did not have as nowhere a good spooky atmosphere as the first two games, unfortunately. And it just felt dumbed down. It just felt action-y because, you know, in, in addition to necromorphs, you're now shooting uh, those uh, unitologists, right? And they shoot guns. And it, at that point, it, it just felt like an action game. And the co-op aspect of it um, was really just bleh. It just kind of felt tagged on, which was what I'm told EA basically made visceral games do. They literally like, you know, when the game was almost completed, they're like, hey, make a co-op like last second. So they kind of had to shoehorn it in, uh, which is very unfortunate because it made the game even worse. And what annoyed me more was that I wasn't playing as Carver, but Relevant was. And apparently in that game, Carver sees some spooky shit that Isaac doesn't see. I was playing as Isaac, so I didn't see any of the, the stuff that Relevant was seeing, because he was saying he was seeing all this creepy stuff, and he was trying to show me with screenshots. Super disappointing. That's like a, uh, what do you call it? Like, you know, I, I, exclusive to Carver only. I would have to replay the game again just to to, <laughs> to, uh, to see it, which is kind of dumb. Um, and not only was that just Carver exclusive, those sections weren't even part of the main story. They were meant to be like some side area optional area to explore and stuff which was really fucking weird in in uh in dead space to have like optional side areas like an rpg uh speaking of which i thought the crafting system was kind of neat to be able to create your own weapon do all the attachments so it felt very call of duty ish though but still like you could make a really cool plasma your own version of a plasma cutter and stuff which is neat but i prefer the easier, simpler uh, currency system they had in the first two games where you just get money, use that money to buy upgrades or uh, power nodes, which you use to, you know, upgrade your rig, you upgrade your weapons, which is way easier. So, yeah. <clears throat> Death Space 3 and, and Resident Evil Dead Aim take the prize for most disappointing games uh, of the entire marathon for me personally, because I had, I didn't have high hopes for, um, uh dead aim because i you know it's not a very popular or talked about horror game uh in in the resident evil community that's for sure so i kind of figured it'd be bad but you know it was, it was just fun to experience um but dead space 3 was definitely like ooh, that one that one stung a little bit more than dead aim because um you know i just had high hopes and that's the last dead space game too that's like such a shitty uh shitty way to end it you know and i know there's dlc which apparently has some sort of closure but it's ten dollars and it's more bullshit and from judging from the scene reviews it doesn't look like it's worth it so it doesn't look like i'm gonna play it uh you know hopefully somewhere in the future another studio picks up dead space or get the ip gets sold or something in a and a good developer is able to remake it and bring back what I loved about the series, which was its great atmosphere and spooky, spooky uh, monsters in combat. But um, we'll see. Moving on, um, I played Phasmophobia, which was my filler game. I forgot to like I forgot to mention this. Whenever I had extra time uh, on a stream, because for whatever reason I finished a horror game early. Uh, and I had, you know, because I usually shoot four hours, I would default to Phasmophobia. That game was a surprise, like, definitely a surprise. I didn't think it was going to be as good as everyone on Twitch was making it out to be, to be honest. Um, 
The thing that surprised me was despite it being a co-op game, being able to play with four players in a whole group, usually horror up a oh, horror up <laughs> horror co-op that, that that could be a fusion right there. Uh, horror co-op games do not tend to be spooky at all because, you know, you have people there. But for some reason, Phasmophobia is able to pull this off really well. It's actually really scary despite there being uh, people like real people there with you. Um, which even makes the game, you know, if you play that shit alone, that makes it 10 times more spookier. Uh, but definitely a hidden gem surprise for sure. Like, I thought it was just going to be flavor of the month because, you know, a lot of streamers were playing it. I thought it was just going to be one of those silly, you know, a game to make a, a funny LOL XD compilation on their YouTube. But no, it's actually a pretty solid game, pretty fun. Um, it's Obviously, it's still an early access, so I... I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the future of that game. It has a lot of potential. You know, they keep add a lot more levels, a lot more ghosts, a lot more interactions. It, there's already an article that says they're going to improve the AI uh, of the ghosts so they react more to you and, and smarter and stuff like that. So, you know, that's already a step in the right direction. Um, I'll definitely be checking out the updates whenever they, they come out, but definitely hidden surprise for sure uh fantastic game and it's only 14 dollars, and it works both in uh desktop and vr so you don't even have to pay separate for for the game which was amazing um and finally the last game that i'll mention because this video is already almost 20 minutes long and i've ranted too much was visage uh this is the final game i played on halloween i started my stream at 4 p.m which i <laughs> normally start at 10 p.m. so six hours earlier because i uh i looked up how long the game would take and apparently only in early access it took about three to five hours for the average player to complete it the latest chapter to visage got released on october 30th and the developer said there was going to be at least uh according to them 15 hours of gameplay and i was like holy shit that is a long game um but I was able to beat it in 11 hours. So might have been a little bit exaggerated, but I guess if you include the time to get like extras, like the achievements and stuff, possibly take it'll take you 15 or if you take if you go slow kind of and like look at everything. But I was <laughs> I was spooked. I'll be honest. I had not been that immersed in a horror game like that in a long time and it was amazing definitely in the first five to six hours of playing in lucy and dolores's chapters because first of all no one was even there in my chat there was barely some people that's like stop by to say hi and then buy in like two seconds and leave i was like oh okay guess it's just me so it was literally just it just felt like me alone in my room playing visage in the dark so i was I was mad scared. I was jumping at everything. I was I was spooked. And that's a good thing. Like I a lot of the games I played this month just weren't that spooky. Um well other than probably Phasmophobia for, uh for sure. But Visage is a really good game in my opinion. It does the horror atmosphere uh really well, but it's not the perfect horror game for sure. It definitely had a lot of flaws like for me personally, I think 11 hours to beat a horror game is a little too long consider considering it's like um, one of those. I don't want to say it's like a walking simulator, but it, it felt definitely more like a haunted house simulator. And 11 hours is a little too long. Like like Layers of Fear uh, is another game that reminds me of it. And that's probably like four to six hours on your first playthrough, depending. Um, I think that's a better length i don't think it needed to be that long because the newer chapters or the later chapters uh, it did feel like it dragged and the last chapter was basically a big scavenge hunt in your house you know or it, it very much reminded me of amnesia uh where you have to find this key and it's you know it's behind the desk in the one room in the corner and that's kind of like how that game felt towards the end which was a little eh um speaking of amnesia i did not try out rebirth i know that came out and that got a lot of meh reviews um but 
you know, definitely it's a game to save for next year. Um, but overall, Visage was a solid game. I enjoyed playing it. Um, I enjoyed getting spooked. I enjoyed the Easter eggs. Did not enjoy how long it was, though. Um, it's probably one of, one of the other downsides. And, and like I said, the scavenger hunt. So, uh, I'd still probably pick it along with Phasmophobia um, as the best horror games that I played this month, though. Or for the month of October, for sure. If I had to pick a winner, though, probably Faz, because Faz was fun. Uh, it has replayability, unlike Visage, which makes it more fun. And again, it's early access, so to see its its potential uh, makes me excited for the game. And with Phasmophobia, at least there's like sort of a level system and a difficulty system, and you can use your money to buy stuff. So it kind of has that replayability, whereas Visage... It's a one-time deal because, you know, if you play it again, you know, you already know all the scary parts that's going to happen and where to go and all that stuff. So, yeah, definitely I would have to say Phasmophobia. Phasmophobia for the um, multiplayer co op game and then Visage for the best single-player experience. Um, but if I had to pick a winner between the two, definitely Faz. It's definitely a game I'm going to come back to and, and uh, play again on stream someday. Um, but overall, I just wanted to say that the event, I think this event probably went better than any other horror month I've ever done. I think I did a really good balance of single player stuff, co-op stuff and multiplayer stuff. Uh, I did, you know, like I said, I did Resident Evil 5 with Roro, Dead Space 3 with Relevant, and then I got a lot of people in my community to play Phasm Phasmophobia with me, which was neat. Um... I also did single player stuff as well as like old games, right? I played the old Resident Evils, but I also went and played some new stuff as well, like the new Resident Evil 3 remake. Phasmophobia came out this year. Visage came out, fully came out this year. But I also played some really old games, Dino Crisis, Rule of Rose, etc. So I was all over the place, and I think that was a really good balance. I'll try to keep that balance for next year for sure. Um, and I definitely have a lot of other games that I could play for, since, uh, like I said, with the Resident Evil marathon taking so long, I definitely have, uh, games that I didn't get to this last month, but we'll see. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that it was really nice to actually have people watch during the event. Cause I've done, like I said, I've done this event many times in the past and, um, I'll have some people stop by occasionally, and you know, there's always a crowd that comes for the Silent Hills, the Resident Evils, the Fatal Frames, the 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 popular horror games and stuff. But uh, for the most part, you know, usually when I went to like play other stuff, that it was just me. <laughs> I even when I played Fatal Frame One, actually, one Fatal Frame One and Two, like nobody showed up. It was literally just me, <laughs> and. You know, luckily enough, I still enjoy horror games uh, with or without audience. Wow, you can hear my dog barking. Sorry about that. I had to check on my dog because I guess we had a visitor. But anyways, I just wanted to say I appreciate everyone that stopped by, watched any video game that I played for October, hung out, followed, subscribed, all that good stuff. Uh, I really appreciate it. It was just nice to have people, regardless of what game I was playing, uh, in the chat, which was really nice. And yeah, I'll do this again next year. Uh, I definitely have a lot of games. I do have to say, though, that it was hard towards the second half to like pick games because I was getting a little uh, a little tired of of horror games just because I've been playing it, you know, for a whole last month. And I was just running of like, you know, every time I would finish a game, I'd be like, shit, now what am I going to play? Because as much as I love Phasmophobia, you know, there's not a lot of content. So it got really repetitive really fast. And then, you know, when you beat a game, it's like, shit, now what? But, you know, next year, hopefully there'll be more games for me to choose from. I have more options now because, like I said, I got a PS3 emulator to work. And there's a bunch of other games and stuff that I'll probably be interested in trying. So hopefully... It'll go a little bit smoother for next next year, but who knows? I mean, I like playing horror all the time, not just for October. Like, y'all know me. I play horror 
no matter what month it is. I like horror games. So um, that's about it. Going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you guys for watching me rant for almost half an hour. Probably way too long, but oh well. I just wanted to share my thoughts because I didn't get to at the end of my Visage stream because it it was it was a very long stream and I was just tired. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I'll see y'all in the next video. Until then, take it easy. Have a good one. Bye-bye.